good morning. Our worship service will begin in about five minutes.
Good morning. Welcome to worship on this June 7th of 2020. We welcome all those who are worshiping with us today, either on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you join us this day. Uh, just a few announcements. Um, Vicki is there during her regular office hours, but the church still does remain closed for worship and all groups and activities. The council is looking at um, ways in which we could potentially start to open up safely, um, but there are many guidelines that we have to follow in order to do so. Um, so it will, it is not a quick process to open up. Um, so, but be looking for announcements on things in the coming weeks. We do invite you to join us for our Zoom coffee hour on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. If you need help logging into Zoom, uh, please talk to me and let me know. Uh, we do have a dial-in for worship service, um, so you can call on your telephone and listen to a brief, reflex a brief reflection, reading, and prayers. And thank you to all those who brought donations for Minneapolis this week. Um, from We brought up five car loads full of donations to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, and we collected over 3,400 items. Um, this is just a few pictures of the items that we collected over the week. Um, my car was filled to the brim. Uh, they were very impressed at Holy Trinity with how much stuff I got into my car. And this is a picture of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, which is right next to the third uh, precinct in Minneapolis, the one that was burned. Um, you can see many people in line to, to collect items. And while this looks like a giant stack of diapers, they actually go through almost all of that in a day. Um, they are helping hundreds and hundreds of people each day who no longer have places to shop or places to get uh, their everyday basic needs. We will be doing another collection here in the next week or so. It will be a very shortened list of things that we are collecting. Um, these are the things that we will be collecting. So if you'd like to start shopping, you can. Uh, this list will be sent out in an email and posted on Facebook also. And we'll have the dates for when those will be collected. So at this time, I invite you, if you haven't already, to light a candle, uh, to get a bowl of water and your carrying cross as we prepare for worship.
Today's worship service was put together by the churchwide offices of the ELCA. It features a sermon by Elizabeth Eaton, our presiding bishop, and is centered around the sin of racism, something that we have seen the devastating effects of over the last couple of weeks. We begin with a word from Bishop Eaton. In Psalm 118, we hear, out of my distress, I called on the Lord. We are a nation in distress. We are a church in distress. The coronavirus has killed 103,000 of us. The virus of racism has taken hundreds of thousands more throughout our history. Now these two deadly viruses converge. Under this distress, the veneer of equality has cracked and we see the pain, anger, and frustration of those who have been denied the rights and dignity many of us expect and take for granted. I have heard it said that slavery ended with the Civil War and people say, why don't people of color just get over it? Here's the question we need to ask. How do you get over something that isn't over? the extrajudicial killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd that we have seen laid open the wound in our country that has never been fully dealt with and has never healed. The officer's knee suffocating the life out of George Floyd reminds us that blatant acts of intimidation, hatred, and violence continue. Continued peaceful protests, vigils, and demonstrations are not only legitimate, but essential to move this country and this church to honest and deep self-examination. Just as the body of Christ is COVID positive, so is the body of Christ infected with racism and white supremacy. We cannot turn away from this truth. To deny it is dishonest and dangerous. Let us stand with those peacefully protesting and acting responsibly 
Looting and destruction of property does not further the cause of justice. Government has a role to uphold civil order while also to a role to respect peaceful protest. There are those in law enforcement who are acting wisely, even while others have acted irresponsibly. I ask you to support the many people, including those in our church, who are working to de-escalate tensions between law enforcement protesters and the community. Psalm 118 continues, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ, the cornerstone, has already broken down the wall that divides us. The time is now. This is the day. As church, we confess the sin of racism and condemn racist rhetoric and the ideology of white supremacy. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we confess, repent, and repudiate the times when this church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. God have mercy. God have mercy. Racism is deeply ingrained within the ELCA, a predominantly white church. It is deeply embedded within the individual congregations whose members continue to foster stereotypes and support policies that actively hurt people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we declare that the enslavement of black bodies and the removal of indigenous peoples established racism in the United States. A truth this nation and this church have yet to fully embrace. God have mercy. God have mercy. Rooted in slavery, racism is manifested through the history of Jim Crow policies, racial segregation, the terror of lynching, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement, and the disproportionate incarceration of people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we lament the institutional racism of discriminatory treatment within the call process, inequitable compensation of clergy of color, racial segregation, divestment from black communities and congregations, systemic policies and organizational practices, and a failure to fully include the gifts of leadership and worship styles of Black people, Indigenous people, and people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. Confessions are empty promises without meaningful actions. Actions that are grounded in prayer, education, and soul-searching repentance. The sin of racism separates us from one another. Though we trust that we are reconciled to God through Christ's death and resurrection, we seek such life-giving reconciliation with one another. As we repent, let us turn back, let us not turn back to ideologies that promote white supremacy. We trust that God can make all things new. Amen.
we begin our worship with water because we use water to baptize. And this is where our life in God's promise begins. We ask God to be present with us here in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to take some time to remember your own baptism.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim that all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Stories of the Bible Creation In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, formless, and dark. But the Spirit of God was there. On the first day, God said, Let there be light. And God saw that the light was good. Then He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. On the second day, God said, Let there be a space to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. God called the space sky. On the third day, God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with every sort of plant and tree, and God saw that it was good. On the fourth day, God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. God made two great lights, the sun for the day and the moon for the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, and God saw that it was good. On the fifth day, God said, Let the water swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind, and God saw that it was good. On the sixth day, God said, Let the earth make every sort of animal. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock and small animals, each able to have babies of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, to be like us. So God created man in his own image. He formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man, and a man became alive. Then he saw that the man needed a helper, so God put man into a deep sleep, and while he slept, God took one of the man's ribs, then God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. Hello. Hi. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and rule over it. Rule over the fish in the sea, Hello, Will. the birds in the sky, Hello, bird. and all the animals that scurry along the ground. <laughs> then God said, Look, I have given you every plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food, and I have given you every green plant as food for all the animals. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was done. So on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and said it was holy. A 
A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let, their, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 
So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude and on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of heavens and earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And a reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear, in the beginning, 
When God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the son whom Moses called word and over this creative work rooted the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger and all of God shows up. All of God shows up delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. 
the wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam, the breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit, the breath crushed out of George Floyd, the breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen.
gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ and in prayer and action, strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities. Like Chief Seattle, whom we commemorate today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with COVID-19 and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day, especially Mary and all others on our hearts and minds this day. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all, and also with you. And I invite you to take time today to call or text or write a friend or family member and share Christ's peace with them. And our offering is received. You may mail checks to Salem 
or you may drop them off in our new locked mailbox where they will be held securely. And let us pray. Save us, O God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O God, from expecting siblings of color to bear this emotional work, which is not theirs to do. Grateful for the long arc that bends toward justice, we pray. Grant us wisdom. Give us courage for the facing of these days by the power of the Holy Spirit, and for the sake of the kingdom that we share in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Longing for the day when we are gathered again around the table of our Lord, in anticipation of the feast to come, we give thanks for the gift of Holy Communion. Through the gifts of bread and wine, you nourish and strengthen your church, O Lord. Through the gathering of saints around the table, you bind us together in your love. Through the feeding of your people, you strengthen us for service. Through the outpouring of your love, our sins are forgiven. As we wait for the day we will gather around your table again, fill our hearts with hopeful longing, and open our spirits to your presence through the proclamation of your word as we look forward to the feast to come. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you for worshiping us this week, however you joined us, whether online or by phone. We will see you again next week. Um, you may either join us on Facebook, on YouTube, or you may call in over the phone. Have a blessed week.